Okay, everybody here, we are live from Success Series. So I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm double dipping here, folks. We're live from Success Series. Okay, so Daniel, the answer to your question is, um, how do you get numbers for expireds and um, uh, farming and so forth? So the, to me, I would use a company uh, called The Red X to get my expireds. Red X. The Red X, T-H-E-R-E-D-X. You can also use Land Voice. You can also use Mojo. There's a there's a bunch of them to get your numbers. Okay. Got it. I'm sorry I'm late, people, on Facebook. I was a few minutes late. I just noticed I was over. And then um, uh, for uh, the farm, talk to your manager. As you know, Daniel, you guys all have access to Cole C O L E Realty Resource. Really good tool. Highly recommend. Highly recommend that. Great. Say it again. Cole Realty, very good. Cole, yeah, Cole Realty is is, is uh, my favorite for getting your farming numbers because we have that um, service as a company. So every one of our uh, people can get, you know, the managers can get you the numbers in your farm. All right? Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. All right, so let's rec let's um, let's uh, go over what we talked about here. Let's review, okay? So for lead generation, whether it's pre-pandemic or in-pandemic or whatever, um, the four main sources for getting business today are your sphere. Every one of you should be checking in with your sphere. I would call it non-prospecting prospecting, golden rule prospecting. You're checking in, you're seeing how they're doing, and they're going to remember who they talk to, especially with all this uh, craziness going on. So that's number one, your sphere. Second is your farm. I would do the same thing with your farm once you establish who it is. Some of you already have a farm, so I would say you check in, same thing. I also think today, see, a lot of people out there think there's nothing happening. You should know the numbers in your area, like in Las Vegas. You know, there are four, five, six. I think last week there were almost 600 new sales, new listings. Okay, it's very consistent too. It's a little less than it was prior, but it's still doing pretty well. Okay, so, and you got to know those numbers. So when someone says to you, nothing's selling right now, well, that's not true. There are properties selling every day. Okay. So when I believe in your farm, once you've checked in with everybody, you know, if you have a just sold in your area, you should be calling them about that. That's the perfect way. Plus, you know what? If you're being a professional and still working today, um, it shows you're a professional and still working today, which is good for the people that are moving. Okay, so, and then the third group are for sale by owners. Like if you watch any of my Facebook lives with Dan, Dan Mum, for sale by owners, what a tremendous time to call them. Plus, I've always thought they're telling the world they want to sell. You have a real estate license. That is a val valuable conversation, especially with all the tools that you guys have. Buy side, you know, uh, you, we have Market Watch. You have, I mean, you have a tremendous amount of tools. That you, you can show these people how we get properties sold today. I'm a for sale by owner, and you show them the buy side report and what we have in, the, in our pipeline. That's a tremendous uh, way to do business. Okay, and then expired listings. Okay, and FISBOs and expired, you can get them both from, like I said, Red X, Land Voice, uh, Mojo, Vulcan 7. There's so many ways you can get them. All right? All right, so your sphere, a farm, which would include just listed, just sold, uh, your for sale by owners, and expired listings. And the last group is social media. Social media. Somebody asked me about that earlier. But for, before I get into that, though, does anybody have any questions about the four I just mentioned? Any questions about that? <laughs> All right, good. So now social media. Now, before I get into social media, let me just say this. When I said it earlier, too, is that you're looking at one of the longest holdouts when it comes to social media. So I didn't think it was valuable. I didn't think it had any, I thought it was actually stupid at first. I really did. I can't even tell you what I used to call Facebook, which we're on right now, Facebook Live, but it wasn't good. It was an HR violation, so I can't say it right now. But um, I wasn't, didn't think it was good. I still think some of the aspects of it are a little crazy, but today I would actually, if you, by the way, if you told me five years ago I'd be doing what I'm doing today on social media, I would tell you you're out of your mind. You're apparently on something, may I ask what it is? But today, today I use it a lot, all right? And it's a tremendous way to do business, folks. Remember, okay, so look, let me just break it down. Social media 
is a way for you to become familiar as a professional, as a human, as a working person, a mother, a father, a realtor, all of that. Because, you know, that's why um, reality shows are so important today because people are nosy and they want to see in your life. They know that theirs isn't perfect and they love to see when yours isn't too. So that's why you show them a little of everything. You show them you're working, you show them your your personal life, you show them your kids, you know, you just, you also use it like a journal, like this is my life. I would, I would make a lot of it uh, business and I would make a decent amount of it. I put all kinds of crazy stuff on there that I, I would never have done. But now the reason I do that today is because when people can see you're a professional and they get to know you, the chances of them using you go up tremendously. So the word is, you know, I would say there's two words, content. That's the easy word, content. You know, we have tremendous content in the VAC, Virtual Agent Center. We have tremendous content in the Resource Center. You have tremendous content from doing active open houses, virtual open houses, taking new listings, making new sales, your clients, your customers. All of that is content. That's one word. So you want to give them content. You also want to document what you're doing. That's the reality show part. So content, document. Those are the two words you want to think about. Document means you show them what you're doing. You give them your opinion. You, you, you actually do what I'm doing right here. You have a video and you talk to them and show them how you converse, who you are. And the more they get to know, it's like a, it's like a one-way conversation, although people are talking to me, but I can't see them right now. Um, you know, and they get to know you better. And when they get to know you better, the chances of them using you and referring you are a heck of a lot better. And the other thing is, is what's really crazy in today's world is um, when you're, when they see you on video working, doing your job and all, before they meet you, it's really weird how they treat you better. It's really interesting how well video works, but most people won't do it today. Now, I, I believe one of the reasons most people won't do it today is because They've used their high school glamour shot on their marketing. So if I actually do videos, oh my God, my videos don't look like my picture. You know, let me tell you my theory about marketing. Some of you aren't going to like this, but I apologize in advance. Um, if the DMV won't let you use the picture, you should not use it on your marketing. That's right. I'm looking right at you now. Any questions? Okay. You should not use it if you can't. Go ahead. There was a question that somebody put into the, um, like the little chat feed on the side uh -huh. and, uh, I wasn't sure if you had a chance to see that, uh, relating to calling expires. I don't see that one. Um, it says, I have a question. Forrest told me not to call expires. Are we able to reach out to expires via phone calls now? Is there a lawsuit or am I wrong? No, Forrest told you not to call expireds on the DNC list. That's what Forrest told you. So yeah, you can't call people on the do not call list, but you can call expired listings. Okay, but up until the, this uh, pandemic thing, I would say going to visit them is actually the best way to do it. You know, you prepare the buy side report, you go over. And I know an agent in Arizona who's still doing it and not getting a hard time, even with all this going on. So, um, but it, you know, for the next month or two, I would definitely call them and send them the information. And um, then when things lighten up, I'd go back to visiting them again. But no, as long as they're not on the do not call list, you can call them. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. All right, so um, back to, and, and yeah, if, you, if anybody, if you think, was, I think that was Jen. Jen, if you see that again, just let me know. Okay, because that's great. I don't know, I'm like behind in the questions for some reason. They show up like I, I just saw that one. All right, so, um, and now back to social media. Um, and I jokingly say, you know, if you can't use the picture at the uh, DMV, you shouldn't use it. Guys, it, and it's the number one, one of the reasons why you won't do video is because you're all dissecting yourself and looking at yourself and oh my God, I've got three chins. And nobody cares about that but you. The toughest critic you're ever gonna have is you. The person that's gonna beat you up the most is you. But everybody else is just listening to your content and your message, okay? So when you start doing it, because they know, people know intuitively how hard it is to do videos. So when you're doing them and being vulnerable, they already respect you more because of it. Trust me on this, just try it. Give an update of the market. Talk about a listing you just had. Talk about a sale. Talk about interest rates. 
Just do a video, give them part of you and they'll want to use you more. You have the tremendous opportunity. I see, I call social media, you know, the third CRM. I don't, you know, because I believe that like I have uh, a lot of followers and friends and all, and I'm just showing them what I do, who I am. I use it for recruiting and retention. You guys should use it for listings and sales. You have a tremendous opportunity to have a gigantic other farm from social media that costs you zero. And with all the two bells and whistles and marketing that we have at Berkshire Hathaway, it'll make you look good. Okay? But you got to get over the vulnerability of, I don't like the way I look on video. Oh, what do you think I do? Watch video of myself and become overjoyed? I don't go, oh, look at me. I am so attractive. I don't do that. Oh, look, at, I used to have hair. I mean, people don't realize that. I had hair. Yeah. And if I have a picture with hair, it's too old. All right? So just accept the way you look. All right? Because nobody else... Look, I always jokingly say, the only person that's beating the crap out of you is you and three really mean girls you went to high school with. Everybody else is not doing that to you. They're listening to your content. They're here... Because remember, you're developing a group of people that will use you now or in the near future. Like, I have people that drop out of my Facebook all the time and I just keep replacing them. And then I now I have a big group that has stuck. As a matter of fact, today... I say no to more friend requests than I say yes to because especially on my personal page, you can only have 5,000, you know, LinkedIn allows you 30, Instagram's unlimited, you know, so, and I would say for, for social media, the big four are Facebook. You will do the most business from Facebook. I don't, like my kids tell me, Facebook's for old people, right? But old people have the money in the listing, so you want to be on there, even if you're younger. And, you know, LinkedIn, I would call second, then Instagram, and then Twitter, because um, Instagram, the demographics are like 18 to 32, which is great for buyers and probably some listings, but Facebook is where you're gonna get most of your listings from. And I, the reason I say that is, I've listened to people way smarter than me on my YouTube app about, that's how I come up with my own plan for social media is by listening to other people that are way better than me, okay? So there you go. There are, okay, um, the, the, the top five, okay, so the first one, number one on our page is lead generation and the five categories for me, I think most of them fit into this category, your sphere, the number one group. Everybody should be working at building their sphere every day. The second group is your farm or just listed, just sold within a farming area, a geographical area, which is a great way to do business, especially in today's world with inventory being down, especially today with the pandemic because people don't think anything's selling so if you're calling them, tell them about a recent sale, that's news, okay? Then your expired listings, obviously very, I mean, they're raising their hand. I'm selling, call me, all right? And then same thing for, with for sale by owners, okay? So very simple. And then also, also while you're doing all of this, you should be building your social media. No one is comfortable on, well, I've, I've seen a few people that are comfortable right off the bat. I was not one of them. I had to become comfortable with it, but I did after a period of time. Okay, any questions about what I just went through? Questions, comments, concerns, epiphanies? Yeah, Rick. Yes. Yeah, Rick. I, um, you, you mentioned something about YouTube. How do you su suggest we utilize YouTube to build our brand to, to, at, in, as a social media platform? Or is that something that you would consider a social media platform? Yeah, um, okay, so that's a great question. Every video I do, I put on YouTube. So I, I, every time I do, like this video, all right, um, all the videos I've been doing Facebook Live, it, like I'm, while I'm doing this Facebook Live, I can save this video and share it, all right? So I'll save it and it'll end up on my YouTube channel. So your YouTube channel is kind of like, like for me, I use it for all my different topics. For you guys, I would use it as a way of um, warehousing all your videos because people will check you out. You know, people think their website is real important today and it is, but what's more important is your social media. That's your resume. And then if somebody gets real interested and they go check out your YouTube channel, that's a really good sign. So as an agent, I would use it as my warehouse because if I do a great video today, it doesn't mean I can't reuse it in a month, two months, six months, because you can, right? You don't have to, you can recycle some of your videos. I would like to think everybody in my, in my feed is watching every one of them, but they're not. By the way, I've never had anybody say, I saw this a month ago. Okay, so... You can recycle them is, another, is one of the points. And the other point is when people are doing homework about you, some people will check out all your social media and your YouTube. So I think it's a good thing to have as well. 
Does that make sense? Great question. Thank you. Anybody else have questions about what we just covered? Questions, comments? Uh, I heard somebody. I heard yeah, him. Uh, you hear me now? Yes. On the, uh, with the, with the social, I listened to your podcast from, I think it was Coco from uh, Vegas last week. Okay. He came in from like another industry from like architecture construction. So the question is, he's kind of known for that witness social sphere. So if you start talking to social spheres, you know, so why, like you talked about anybody that knows you, how do you transition or tell them you, you want to be going from one thing to something else when they know you for something, you know, from, they know you from being in one industry and now you're, you know, coming into real estate again or coming into real estate. So how do you break that? Well, I okay. See. Great question. And remember, you know, uh, this is this is not a dig on realtors, but remember, um, if I was an architect, I mean, I, I coached one of the women, Christina Palermo, I was just coaching this morning. She used to be a, a chiropractor. I, I know we've had a couple, I have Michelle in Arizona, Michelle Partham, she used to be an attorney. So we have people that come in from all other, I would do an introduction video. Hi. Because remember, it's not like I'm having an open heart surgery or brain surgery. People think real estate's easy. So if you're coming from being an architect into, or whatever, into real estate, people are like, oh my God, if you can handle that, you can definitely handle real estate because anybody can do that. That's what people think. So I would just do an introductory video. Hi, this is Rick. I, you may know me as being an architect, but I am now in real estate. I'm gonna give you the same, and I would just do an introduction and then just boom, make the transition. You know what? I hate to say it like this, but nobody cares. I mean, they care after they've seen you for a long period of time, all right? What they care about is what kind of service, you know, do I hear good things? And what you're gonna basically create that and you have the ability to give yourself, I think, a head start there by using social media smart. I mean, look at the Kardashians. They're like, a, one of them's a billionaire now from social media. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Okay, so yeah, I would just do an introduction, walk right into it and keep giving them valuable content. Act as if, because real estate, that's why whether you've had your real estate license 20 minutes or 20 years, if they like you and trust you, they're gonna do business with you. Unlike I'm having open heart surgery and you got your, you've been, what? I meet with you and you look young, I don't, uh, right? Not so in real estate, you can be young, old, It's it's the evenest playing field out of, you know, Kobe Bryant. Okay, Kobe Bryant was great. I mean, Michael Jordan, great. But, you know, yeah, they were tall, and but without their work ethic and the way they did, they would not have been who they are. So real estate is easier because the you don't have to be tall. You don't have to be one color. You don't have, it's even. So you just start walking, talking, acting as if in no time, you will take off in this business. Unfortunately, not everybody does that. That's the problem. Hope that answers your question. That was kind of a long-winded. Any other questions before we take a quick break? Questions? My pleasure. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, one, one comment regarding expires. Our office manager last week had mentioned uh, when we do call expires, just make sure you're not calling a company expired listing. Kind of goes without saying, but I figured I would mention it. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. I never, people always ask me, did I call my own company expired? No, there's so many of them out there. Why would I do that? Because it, I just think, now, I know some of you do that, and, but I, I never would, never used to do it, and I wouldn't go do it if I got back into real estate, because it just, uh, it, you know, it really, they already were with the company. That's the way they look at it, right? And you're going to end up irritating some of your coworkers. So I agree with you 100%. Thank you for bringing that up. Anybody else? Well, we got 75 people on here today. That's pretty good. Anything else? Okay, great. So let's do this. Um, we're going to take a quick... Rick. Go ahead. Rick, it's Heather there. Um, so uh, someone commented, how do we know who is on the do not call list? Okay. Um, okay. So if you're buying a service, they tell you. If you're using coal, they tell you. So, but if you're not then it's, you, you, yeah, you may not know. Uh, and even if you're using a service, they'll tell you. They still give you the phone number if they have it, but they just tell you they're on the do not call list and you don't want to be calling them. You want to be you know, dropping off a package or knocking them. And I, like I said, you may, I would still drop off packages today. I would definitely do that and then follow up with a call. 
They can spray down. I mean, they have mail being delivered. They have, you know, UPS being delivered. I would bring a package today. But if you're going to knock on the door, at least be wearing a mask. But think about think about the commitment it shows if you're willing to do that and you have gloves on. You know, I, I think it's, you know, I, I would, I know somebody doing it right now, getting results doing it. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying it's an option if you do it smartly. But you can definitely drop off and call and follow up. So great question. Yeah, thanks, Heather. If you're going to be here most of the time, if you can, I don't know why my questions are not popped up right now. So you got it. You got it. Thank you. I really appreciate you doing that. Of course. All right. Let's do this, folks. Let's take a quick. Okay, I have 958 right now. So let's just call it 10 o'clock. Let's start right back up at 1010. And then we'll be taking a break from 11 to 1 after that. Okay, so I'll see you guys back here in 10 minutes. Bye, Facebook people.